Hello there, it's Joe the CRM chap here and we're back with a new video in my series all about Microsoft Exam PL600. This is the solution architect exam for those who are wanting to validate their skills working and building out solutions involving the Power Platform. So in today's video we're going to be spending a bit of time just recapping over some fundamental security concepts and features uh, that relate to Dataverse. Now, if you're at the level where you're thinking about sitting the PL600 exam, uh, all of this should be stuff that you have a good grasp of and awareness of, but it's useful perhaps just to spend a few moments recapping so we're clear on the potential uses cases and how we go about setting up each of these uh, within our Dataverse environments. So we're going to look at our first two features first of all, um, um, uh, which uh, effectively classed as sort of non-solution aware components. These are more sort of configuration based components that are typically bespoke to a particular Dataverse environment, may typically be created manually or may also be factored in as part of something like a config migration script. So look first of all at our business units. To start working with our business units we need to click on to environments over here, navigate into the environment that we want to configure, click on settings at the very top, then if we expand out users and permissions down here, we'll see that we've then got an option here for business units. Let's just click onto that straight away. And this will take us out into the classic interface. Now, what we've got with business units is the ability to create these uh, distinct and separate boundaries in our organization where we can effectively put different users, teams, and also any corresponding records that they may own. So if we're wanting to maybe have it so that we've got uh, you know, some very sort of sensitive categories of records that only certain people in the organization can see and interact with, uh, then it may be appropriate for us to go in and create a business unit. Um, now, you may be tempted when you're going into this for the first time to actually go out and map out you know, the exact structure of your organization by having every department as a business unit. Uh, my typical advice is not to sort of map it too closely to how your organization is structured, really think of these more as sort of security boundaries as opposed to a one for one for your uh, particular organization's departments or maybe groupings or subsidiaries, whatever it may be in terms of how your organization is structured. Each Dataverse environment will always start out with a single business unit where everyone will sort of exist in uh, when uh, by default and we can freely go in and start to create new additional business units, all of which must be children of the existing root business unit and then from there we can then start to create a further hierarchy uh, you know based on our specific needs and how I wanted to map this out in the system. So as part of this we need to specify a few different sort of details so maybe in this case I want to have a business unit for my sales department I can put in various sort of details so maybe if we are mapping to a subsidiary based organization or maybe maybe we're a local a subsidiary of a, you know, in a different geography or something like that, then we can put in the various different address details down here. Uh, notice that we need to supply a parent business unit value always as part of this. Then we hit the save button, the business unit will be created behind the scenes. What we can then start to do is then uh, investigate to see which particular users um, belong to this particular business unit and also any corresponding teams. Uh, note that as part of every new business unit we create, a new team is created for it as well. Um, a default team record. With our new business unit defined, uh, as an administrator I could maybe then go in and uh, move some users into the new business unit. I can do this by navigating back into the uh, Power Platform Admin Center, selecting users down here like so. Uh, I want to find maybe my own particular user account and you'll see that I've got an option on here to change the business unit. Um, so just note the warnings around this when you're sort of moving it, uh, the users will, will lose any role assignments, so we may need to go back in and assign them a new security role. Um, but this would typically be maybe a one-time action or an action that we need to do on occasion when, we're moving, when we need, maybe a user moves job role or something like that. So that covers business units then. Uh, the second non-solution aware component that we've got from a security standpoint uh, is our team. So we've already noticed, seen that uh, a team is created for us automatically uh, with every new business unit. And this is what we call effectively a owner team that's created. Um, we can also create what's called uh, access teams as well, uh, which might be useful for more sort of complex sort of sharing type scenarios. So again, all of this is managed from within the Power Platform Admin Center. We can navigate down to teams like so. We can see here, there's the default team that's been created of type owner. Uh, for the new business unit that we've got and we can go in and then add in additional teams like so. 
So we need to always make sure we give our team a name. So I just call this my PO600 sort of sample. The team must always be aligned to a particular business unit uh, and also a particular administrator. So maybe I just pop in my own name here, like so. And we can see the options down here that we've got. Uh, so there are two sort of typical type of teams. Owner teams uh, can effectively, um, as the name implies, own records in the system. Uh, we can assign permissions to the team um, and various different things like that. Whereas our access teams, we're typically using these to sort of control uh, ac um, access to a particular one record or maybe different record types in the system based on membership of the team. In most situations, you'll want to go down the owner route. Um, the access route will be for more complex type sharing scenarios. Uh, the additional two options down here, we will return to as part of a future video. So watch out for that. So for now, we just go through the steps like so to create this as an owner team. We can at this point start to add in some members, uh, which I'll just skip for now. Uh, and also as well, we can then assign particular security roles to this team. And then any members of the particular team will then inherit the role that we've assigned on, like so. So in three steps, then we were able to very quickly create a team. This team now exists within this particular environment over here. It's not going to be subject to any sort of, um, um, you know, any sort of ALM in terms of be being able to be included as part of our solution. We would have to think about recreating it ourselves in our different environments, or maybe use something like the configuration migration tool to get it pushed out into those different environments. So the next security concept we're going to look at. Um, um, is our security roles and this is the the first one which is effectively a solution aware component so if I navigate onto the third tab up here I can see that I'm in a solution over here for my PL600 demos I will notice at the top that we've got the option of being able to create um, a security role from within here so potentially for scenarios where we're just wanting to add on a few additional privileges uh, and maybe um, you know, to, to maybe cover off some, maybe a manager role or something like that, it may be appropriate to create a security role in this fashion. If we wanted to base a security role off an existing one in the system and customize it further, then it may be more prudent to instead go back into the Power Platform Admin Center, click on settings over here, um, navigate down to security roles, find the security role that we want to effectively make a copy of, um, and then select it and press the button at the top like so. So I'm just going to call this my PO600 basic user, like so. Copy that. The security role will then be sort of duplicated in the background. It'll appear on the list down here if we were to scroll down. And now what we can do is we can add this existing security role into our solution. It'll have all the same permissions as the basic user role, but can now be then be customized further to suit our particular scenarios. So this, so so again, as all this, these should be topics that you've got familiar, good familiarity with already. If you've gone down the PO two hundred route, but let's just briefly look at what we can do when we start modifying a security role. So on here, we can modify details such as the role, the name of the role, the business unit. Then all these various tabs up here allow us to control the precise permissions that we want. So always make sure that we're familiar with all the various different permission types. You know, covering our CRUD append, append to, assign and share, things like that. And also make sure that we, we fully grasp the concept of our sort of uh, permission levels uh, and how potentially the type of table, whether it's a user or team owned table or an organization owned table will potentially impact what permissions we can assign. And also be aware in terms of how business units also come into play around all of this. And uh, once we finish, we can then click on save and close like so. And this will then go in and then create us, um, uh, apply those changes into the solution. The final security co component type that we want to look at today is our column security profiles, uh, traditionally referred to as our field security profiles. And these would be for situations where maybe we've created a column in the system uh, that we're wanting to secure. So maybe we're storing things like maybe long credit card numbers uh, here in the UK, things like maybe national insurance number or passport number. Uh, anything that's really sort of sensitive that we want to have more fine-tuned permissions over. Um, so if we, as an example, maybe look to add in a new column that we can use to test the profile with. So I'm just going to add in uh, an existing table. I'll do my contact table as an example. Uh, we're not going to add in any existing components. What I am going to do, though, is create a new column on this table. 
Um, so I'll call this, uh, we'll go with the example that I mentioned a second ago. So we'll just have this maybe as a national insurance number. It's going to be a text uh, column. All of those details look fine. The only option that I just need to enable down here is the option for column security, like so. Click on done and then save the table. Now what we can do is if we navigate up to all up here and click on new, go to security and then column security profile, uh, we can go through the steps of creating this for the very first time. So all profiles need a name, so I'll just call this my PL600 demo like so. Click on the save button. And if we navigate down to field permissions, what we'll notice is that the field that we just created, or the column I should say, uh, is in here. So every single column we enable for uh, column security will appear on this list for every single field security profile that we specify. And really what we're trying to do with the with the field or the column security profile is define the precise privileges that we want to grant to users that we assign the profile to. So notice over here that we're able to grant uh, up to three different privileges to a particular column. And we can do this on a per column basis. So effectively we can allow users to maybe read the data in the column, we can allow them to update the data into the field or even allow them to input it when they're creating a new, uh, a new sort of uh, row in the system. The good thing about all of this is that this is all uh, obeyed and honoured both at the application layer, so if we're accessing the data via maybe a model driven app and also as well at the SDK layer. So therefore, you know, we can always ensure that um, the user doesn't accidentally get access to data they're not supposed to based on what the column security profile is, um, um, you know, has assigned to them from a privilege standpoint. So all we now do on here is just define the exact privileges that we want. So maybe you just want to allow somebody maybe to, to update and maybe read the data, but not create it like so. Click on the OK button. We then just continue to do the same for every single column in the particular, uh, in the particular profile. And then from there, we can then uh, look to assign the specific sort of either teams uh, that we want to have for these particular sort of um, for these pr uh, privileges to take effect. So maybe in this case we could use the sales team that we created before. So just select the sales uh, team like so. Click on add. Or alternatively, we can just grant it on a per user basis. Uh, and this again, this is typically be something that we have to do in each environment. So although the profile itself is a solution aware component, we typically would need to go in after a deployment to go in and just assign these. Uh, for the very first time and on an ongoing basis. We hit the save and close button at this point and then we should be able to see that our column security profile would appear in the solution list like so. So that covers it off for working with column security profiles and indeed this video itself. So really, we're not really, um, as part of this, wanting to go super deep into these topics. As I said already, if you've gone through the PL200 or the PL400 exams, this should all be just re-familiarizing yourself with the base sort of concepts. However, you know, when you're looking at the PL600 exam for the first time, it is useful just to get a bit of a recap, a bit of a refresher, so we know what we're talking about. And so that we can, you know, when we're faced with a potential question in the exam, we can recommend the most optimal solution based on the scenario that we're faced with. So all it needs me to say now is thank you very much for watching today's video. Please do like the video and subscribe to the channel if you've been enjoying the content and do check out the rest of the videos in this series. I hope you found them uh, useful so far uh, and I wish you a great day ahead. Cheers. Bye.